It's always been the holy grail of sorts to try to realistically capture an orchestra and put them inside a computer. For Mellotrons, Fairlights, and emulators, they were all in the service of trying to take an orchestra with you in a box for obvious reasons, convenience and uh, cost effectiveness. Film, television and video game composers alike try to recreate the orchestra as well, as realistic as possible, since not everyone had Star Wars sized movie budgets. With technology getting more and more powerful, companies like Roland uh, with their standalone S760 samplers and massive kitchen sink sample libraries like the Vienna Symphonic Library, composers and musicians began to have access to a pretty remarkable set of tools that can emulate the orchestra quite convincingly. Even big budget A-list composers like Hans Zimmer in his early career noted how useful it was to have a sample orchestra available to him to essentially mock up his scores efficiently and very quickly. So as someone with a classical music training background, I can appreciate how useful these kinds of tools would be to a working composer or a musician. So just to share with you guys, if you're not already familiar with the power of some of these virtual instruments, let me uh, play for you a little sample. Uh, this is a French horn. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And again, it's the legatos that really sell this. And, I, and I'm not doing anything. This is just right out of the box. And if you were to lay down some uh, MIDI uh, uh, filters or, um, again, expressions that you can lay on top of it. And most uh, legit composers will do that. They'll do another whole pass on that just after the MIDI note uh, was performed. Uh, it can be even more expressive. So, uh, and you take this and you multiply it across an entire orchestra of number of tens or 50 or 100 instruments, you can have an incredibly compelling virtual orchestra. So why would you ever take the time to record an orchestra? I mean, with the samples being so good, it seems quite impractical, especially in the light of the fact that it's expensive, it's very time consuming, and not the most flexible thing there is. But I think you guys already know the answer to this question. I mean, why do drummers still record their own drums? And drums, all things considered, is a bit easier to track and sample than, say, an orchestra. So with so many great drum sample libraries and drum loops, why would you ever record your own live drums? If you ask any Hollywood professional, especially for a certain type of film, they would choose the live orchestral performance over a sampled orchestral performance any day of the week. Despite all the improvements in technology, unfortunately, computers still have a difficult time emulating human performances. Think about each musician who typically has spent their entire life honing their craft. And in turn, they have collectively spent time together, perhaps decades playing together. And they're all working in harmony to support a singular vision on screen to point or counterpoint a particular emotion. That's some powerful stuff. I was fortunate enough to sit in on one of these larger orchestral sessions, and let me tell you, it is electrifying. I don't think any recorded medium, even IMAX, can capture the emotions that you feel. I think it's really the air that moves around you.
Okay, so I've got these two samples loaded. One, the virtual instrument of a cello soloist. And then I've got me, rather a novice playing of the cello. And so as you can hear on the virtual instrument, And then my performance here. The purpose of this particular recording, which I always have, uh, was for me to track this particular cello solo performance to be loaded into a granular synthesizer. So um, it had to be sort of this long, gritty, have a lot of character. Uh, so that um, the granular synthesizer kind of can do its own thing. Um, one other note, uh, obviously these sound, you know, quite different, but, um, you know, again, I try to volume match it, but I didn't necessarily go and try to EQ match it because when I track the solo cello of, of me performing it, I didn't do any EQing at all. This is just a straight Nomen mic recording directly into the, the recorder. And this particular, this virtual instrument, this is, a, this is a default instrument that came out of the box. And I mean, what's happening obviously is this, this performance or this recording has to, you know, really translate to a whole wide, of, wide range of scenarios. So they obviously had this particular sound very, dark and neutral as opposed to my recording which you know it does sound hyped but really it it really isn't it's just just straight up you know really close up recording with a lot of detail and air all right so i've got both recordings loaded up here onto the gr1 the first recording uh, is the sample of my cello performance from the Amazon cello that's uh, right now about $350. And then the second sample is a cello performance and a sample recording from our $20,000 Spitfire audio collection. So let's hear the Amazon cello first. <laughs> Okay, so now let's hear the Spitfire cello sample. Okay, so was this a fair comparison? On one hand, you would think that an expensive sample library would perform well under any circumstance. But in this particular case, I would say that really inexpensive cello from Amazon played by a completely inexperienced cello player like me definitely excels. And I would prefer that recording over, say, the Spitfire library because one has way more character and the other just feels very rounded and dull. But if you think about it, that's what you expect. When you have a sample library of that magnitude, it has to have all the rough edges rounded out in order for all the multi samples to work together. So I think the lesson learned here is the kind of lesson that I keep learning over and over again, and it's pretty universal. That's to say, it doesn't matter whether it's a sample library or you took the time to do live recording or it's all live recording. I think really it's just about the willingness to put an extra effort into that creative process, that creative decision making. And I think ultimately at the end, you will have a more artful 
a more compelling、uh, work, a compelling piece of music, and I think that's、uh, the lesson learned, and it's the thing that compels me to continue to pursue this craft. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I will see you guys next time. <laughs>